Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zinger Show with me, your host, Agostino Zinger. This is episode number 213, dos, uno, tres. How you doing? Buenas dias, my friends. Hope you're doing well, rested, hydrated, chilled with that malarkey, you're feeling good. You've got some good moisturizer on your skin, right? You've put on some deodorant, you put on your best t-shirt. And you're heading out feeling like a million bucks. It's Thursday. Thursday morning to be precise. You only have one more day left until it's Friday. You absolute losers, right? The people that look forward to specific days in the week. You've only got one more day to go until you can get lit, get crazy. Have you find yourself strung out on the floor somewhere in the middle of Shoreditch, contemplating your life decision with no battery on your phone. You've lost your wallet and no friend around you to help you out. You've only got one day for that thing to happen. So take it easy. And enjoy yourself for now, all right? Enjoy yourself. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm feeling amazing. Thank you for asking. I've just come back from the gym, hence why I'm pumped and ready to go. Had a big breakfast in my stomach. I'm feeling nice and fed. You now I mean? Feeling fed in that, right? Huh? Had a good coffee, so I've got that little spring in my step. Feeling good, man. Feeling good. God damn it, I feel good and look good. No, I don't really look good. Quick to be honest. My hair looks fucked and my beard's a bit, a bit weird, isn't it? But what can you do? For those of you listening via the podcast app, you have no idea what I look like because I just sound like a million bucks. I wish I sounded like a million bucks. I wonder if you could actually sound. Is there? Is there an? You know, everyone's having all this. You know, there's always cosmetic surgery, right? It's all kind of you know, skin deep for the most part, right? Um, there's that crazy stories about incels. Supposedly, um, those guys are in, involuntary celibates, right? The ones that are so, the ones that are accused of shooting up schools with that malarkey because they, you know, they can't hook up the, with the with the cheerleader in their school, so they decide to, you know, purchase a Glock and go and murder all their fellow students. Doesn't make any sense, but it does happen. Cool. So these whack jobs on the internet are now deciding to get facial reconstructions in order to um, attract a mate, right? Because unfortunately for guys, which is really strange, a really un- rich, interesting um, conversation that happens, or not even conversation, there's a lack of conversation happening nowadays about it. Um, there's not, for all the advances in um, female, uh, for, the, yeah, for the technological advances, or, you know, fashion-based advances, whatever it may be called, designers pushing the envelope, um, surgeons pushing what can be done, right, the limits of what can be done with women's bodies. And, um, you know, there's those gadgets that girls wear, those kind of waist things that sort of suck in all your fat. You seen those things? Now, that's what you call crazy, right? Um, let's see if I can find a video of it on YouTube because these things are insane, right? Um, women, waist, what's it called? Let's see, waist. Uh, was it container? Let's let's say equipment, waist, um, pocket. I don't know. Pocket container. I don't know. Women's waist, um, workout. Let's see what it is. Not that one. Women's waist, fat. Let's see if I can. Can I find it? What can I find it? It's those weird things that people wear. They're like a. They're like a strap, right? It's like a strap. So is it a strap? Is it a strap? What is it? Um, how to. Pick the right belt for your body shape. Belt, okay. Um, what are they called? They called something, right? Um, snaps or knaps? What are they called? S- women waist slimming belt, right? Let's see if I can find that. Hmm, I can't find it. Where is it? Is it that? That's a waist trainer. Hmm. Body shaper, that's the one. Waste body shaper. My God, they call them body shapers, right? Insane. Imagine you're a woman, you've got something called a body shaper. All right, cool. Here we go, right? So, for all the technological advances for guys, no, no, sorry, for women, you know, in terms of cosmetic surgery, guys don't have anything even coming close to it. But it's really interesting that um, the, there's no conversation, or there is, there is a lack of conversation, especially if you speak to a girl and you, you know, every guy has that occasion where you're a dating attractive girl or you know someone that's attractive in your social group and one day you see them and they come out with no makeup, right? And the conventional thing all do say around the world is, oh my God, you look so pretty without a makeup. Why do you wear makeup? And the girl looks at you like you're speaking Chinese, like, what the fuck? Of course I'm going to wear makeup. Why wouldn't I? There's a guy, you're like, I don't get it. Why do you put yourself through all that, all that trouble if you look hot coming straight out of the bathroom, right? 
But then what these girls eventually end up, or what you realize when you get older, I'm just carrying a little bit, what you realize when you get older is that, of course a girl would wear makeup. Imagine if you're attractive, right? Already, you're, imagine, let's say you're a six out of ten um, of attractive. So you're, in, you're above average, you're generally attracted to most dudes, or ju- most dudes generally find you attractive, and you add the makeup on top of it to kind of bump up your points a bit and make your eight out of ten, sometimes a nine, depending on what you wear. Why wouldn't you do that, right? So there's common sense in it. But there's not co- really a conversation around some of the really nefarious and downright, you know, how would you call them? Conniving, lying, manipulative ways. Girls sometimes use makeup, clothing to hide the deficiencies that they're afraid of showing people on the first, you know, time they meet them. Especially the girl that's like looking to hook up with somebody or the girl that's, you know, on the first date wanting to impress the dude, whatever it may be. And one of the things that's really nefarious or something that really kind of bugs me and I'm surprised no one really speaks about it too often is is this crazy shit, right? These waist shape of body things that girls tend to wear, which are insane. Essentially, there it's a corset type thing, which I've got here on screen, that essentially hides all your fat and makes you look slimmer than what you actually are, which is insane, right? Because you're not that slim. So it's this sock thing that you pull up over your waist and it sucks in all the fat immediately. It's absolutely ridiculous that this is actually this thing actually exists. It makes no sense. How does this thing actually exist? So you're going out with somebody, you think they look one way, but effectively they look a complete other way. And it's and again, guys don't have anything similar to this. We don't have anything similar. And one thing that's maybe I don't know close or similar to that is this new story I saw the other day about incels reconstructing their faces in order to look attractive, right? But it got me thinking. All right, cool. These incels are you know, reconstructing their faces, or let's say dudes that are, you know, have absolutely no hope of attracting women, uh, you know, in any other way, unless they kind of somehow physically enhance themselves by some way, shape or form. That's all well and good. Um, but it's just so much work in order to kind of get a mate, right? And guys, the only options that we do have is dressing better and working out, right? That's the only thing we have. We can get really ripped and we can basically wear better outfits. Maybe get a trendier haircut. That might help. Maybe a beard. There are studies that show, you know, beards kind of improve a guy's attractiveness by a lot, right? Most women tend to like guys with beards. There are girls out there who kind of get put up by the beard and the idea of kind of kissing somebody with hair all over their lips isn't necessarily something that they're into. But for the most part, you know, if if you carry it off well and because it's rare to find a guy that's got a big beard that doesn't dress well, right? Usually guys that have beards kind of use the beard as part of their outfit. It's sort of like a hat, right? It's sort of like the facial hat thing. So you kind of make it work. So you have like, you know, you fade in your, your size like I have. You might have some funny top thing, you know, um, that you gel up and shit. You might wear rings or you got some jewelry shit. You might have a cool jacket or a waistcoat. You might have one of those scarves that French guys wear that don't necessarily keep your neck warm, but just look good, right? <laughs> yeah. And then when you're in a date, you can kind of swing that thing around her neck and pull her in for a kiss, all romantic, like on a movie. Obviously, do it when she's consenting. Don't do it when she's not, because that would turn awkward. There's always weird things that, you know, guys can do, but girls for the most part can go all the way. Imagine, imagine a guy got a waist trainer, right? A, a body shaper and then pulled out, you know, they hooked up with somebody, got back to their room and then suddenly started derobing and he started taking off this fucking sock thing that made him look less slimmer. Imagine what a girl would think, like, what? Already girls get, imagine that, you know those guys in Brazil that get those things injected in their arm to make their arms look bigger. You've seen those things. Those are insane. Um, was it Brazil? Um muscle thing i don't know it's just like a weird injection that they get right yeah you see you see this right <laughs> if a, if imagine uh, for the ladies out there i'm not sure i probably don't have that many lady listeners but for any lady out there must stumble upon this video please tell me would you ever in a million years date a guy that does this right and it's strange because a guy like uh, the pictures i'm showing on screens are these brazilian dudes who pump um this weird injections into their arm to make them look like they've actually got biceps when they don't it's a bizarre thing, a bizarre trend, but it only seems to exist in Brazil. I'm not sure why it's a thing there. Um, hmm. I guess it's a thing there because naturally, because of the climate and because of their disposition to be a little bit, you know, sexually free. Um, most of most of Brazilians are, you know, quote unquote, attractive to most people. Um, um, they have beaches and shit, so everyone's on the beach. Hot climate, everyone's usually got, no, they're not wearing that much, right? Shorts, vest, or whatever it may be. And I remember there was a friend of ours in our social group who used to say, uh, this girl who used to say, um, she used to feel a lot of, uh, but she, has, she had a lot of body dysmorphia, right? She was a, a really attractive girl. She looked after herself really well, but she used to never really rate herself too much. And I remember once we had like a really good sit down with her, really started speaking, like, what's the deal with this? And she basically revealed that 
um, in her in Brazil, but in with her family, extended family, especially amongst the women, because you know it's usually in those kind of you know um, patriarchal societies, the men and women tend to like separate when they come to house parties, and generally in most places, isn't it right? The women tend to like go off in their own little corner and gossip, and the guys tend to like go off in their own corner and start beating their chest, and it's all kind of you know the 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 conventional um, gender roles are really kind of evident in those kind of house parties, and usually within the women's circle, whenever a daughter or a niece or one of the young little girls comes into the room, the first thing that all the girls or the other ladies in the room are analyzing is their body, what they're wearing, right? And the immediate and a sign that you're doing well or that you're, you know, people think well of you in a group is that they'll refer to you and say, oh, wow, look how much weight you've lost. You look so skinny, you look amazing, right? And um, the opposite would be them not, not saying that, right? And then just kind of talking to you in general and you know for sure people think you've got gained some weight. So there's always pressure, not only on the beach, when you're on the beach, you know, you're running around and there's a, probably a hundreds of, hundred versions of G- Giselle um, running down the beach, you know, looking amazing. So you've got the pressure just around you. And then and you've got the pressure of your family asking you or like, you know, insinuating that you should lose some weight or that you look brilliant because you're skinny and you've gone through. I don't know. They have no idea what you've been through. You might have been shitting out your ass for the last six hours, but all of a sudden because you've turned up with your cheeks sucked in and you've got that little, you know, V showing on your on your pelvis, they think you look amazing. But yeah, this Brazilian thing is, again, really crazy. I think most women, if they saw this, wouldn't want to probably date a guy and look like this. I don't think they would. Whether or not a woman would actually know that this thing is fake, Eve, I don't know. It's a thing that only a guy would know was fake, right? But this looks ridiculously fake. It's not really, you know, this is real. So they do that and then go to the gym. It's insane, right? Insane. They look fucking ridiculous. It's no, that doesn't even look real. It looks fucking bizarre. He looks much better on the left hand side here than he does on the left. It's sort of essentially like pumping this weird gel into your arms, making yourself look bigger. Again, I'm sure there's really bad health risks to it. But again, if a girl says, I wouldn't date that guy. Nah, he looks awful, man. Okay, cool. No problem. But then, is there any different to a girl getting a body shape and s- somehow sucking in all her fat? And a guy is different, right? Because you're adding mass onto your arms so it look, makes it look bigger. But for a girl, essentially what you want is to have that hourglass, hourglass figure, right? That sort of number eight, right? Kind of tiny at the top and kind of big as it's going down. So all you need to do is really get a body shaper, Right to slim that waist and suck it in and make it really slim and have that amazing. You know those girls on Instagram that have those weird, really um, Photoshop kind of curvature on the side. It doesn't make any sort of sense, right? There's no, there's never a roll. There's never anything. So it's just kind of extremely flat. Have that, and then you know have a push-up bra to bring the bosoms right under your chin, and you're set basically. And it doesn't really matter anything else. No one else is looking at that. But for a dude, what can you do? You could potentially get a body slimmer, but you know, guys aren't really trying to look skinny, really, are they? They're trying to look bigger. Or they're trying to look um, athletic or trim, really, is it? Yeah, guys, I don't think guys want to look skinny. That's the difference, I think, probably with women. Women want to look skinnier or slimmer, and guys just want to look athletic, I think, for the most part. I think most guys would want a footballer's body, right? So, but yeah, I don't know. It, it, it just got me thinking, man. Like, you know, the lack of conversation with that. You know, you have girls on YouTube doing makeup tutorials where they're adding, you know, fake cheekbones to their, you know, chubby faces and shit and making themselves look much slimmer in the face. You're like, oh, you're lying. That's a lie, right? You don't actually look like that at all. You know, guys, what can, what can I do? I can just get a haircut. That's it. Get a haircut. Moisturize my face more, but no one's going to be able to tell, you know. I could get tattoos, but I'm too dark. No one will tell I have a tattoo. Just look like I've got fucking eczema, right? It just nothing. I've got nothing. All I can do is just work out and walk around my top. That's why you know what? That's why those guys that walk around in festivals with their tops off all the time. Everyone's like, "Oh man, those guys are idiots, or losers, jocks, or Joe, whatever it is." No, don't blame them, right? Don't blame them. Don't blame those guys that walk around in festivals with their tops. They fucking find one. They walk around the festivals with their tops off. There's nothing wrong with it, right? Because what else can they do? What else can they do in order to kind of get some female attention and to kind of have all eyes on them? If I work, if I've been eating chicken and rice, right, for six months, to close to a year, and go to a gym twice a day, I'm going to take my top off during the festival. Because what's the point of working out if I can't flex and show you my washboard abs or show you my eight pack? What's the point? Hey, what's the point? And you want to point it was, oh, how, you doing? how else am I going to show that I'm ripped? <sighs> crazy world we live in crazy crazy world anyway um that's that opening rant over apologies for anyone that might have been offended um <laughs> anyway let's get into the show bring this camera a bit closer because it's a bit far from me and yeah ah ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, you know what i was thinking of actually that made me laugh or that was not made me laugh but you know it was mildly upsetting remember the other day i mentioned um whether or not 
you know, Kylie Jenner was an idiot or a genius, right? Um, and this is off the back of uh, the kind of outrage online because she decided to have a Hands May Tell theme party with her friends to celebrate the beginning of the new season of Hands May Tell season two, which I recommend you check out. It's amazing. It's on Hulu. You can probably find it on all your other, you know, streaming sites you watch stuff on. But it's a great series. One of, one of my favorites at the moment, of course, because nothing else out at the moment. But again, really compelling story. Really bleak. It's sort of the kind of thing you don't really want to watch before bed. Anyway, um, I was saying, you know, I wonder if Kylie Jenner is an idiot or a genius because, and then it kind of got me thinking. I was read, I listened to a podcast. I think it might have been with Sam Harris or somebody, um, and he mentioned this book by this dude. Um, it was called, let me see if I can find out my Amazon. I should have a list of all the books I added on there. But this guy mentioned this in really interesting book about intelligence that got me thinking about Kendall Jenner, which is, you know, really strange thing to say, but, um, hopefully it'll make some sense in a minute once I get this book up. It was written by someone called, where was his name? Ba -ba 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 -ba, not that, not Snake, not the Fool. What was it? A book on intelligence. That's it. Howard Gardner, right? A guy called Howard Gardner. He's got a book called ba, 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 Multiple Intelligences, New Horizons in Theory and Practice. I need to get it. I haven't got it just yet because I bought all these other books here um, that I'm aiming to get through in the next couple of days. These books there, which I posted on my little Instagram. Oh, I'm back on Instagram too, by the way. So if in case you were wondering where I went, my account got deleted by itself. I don't know why someone deleted my account. I don't know if they reported my account, so I'm not too sure. But I finally be able to get it back, which is quite a long winded process, but it works. You have to email this. You have to email them, and then you have to no. You have to try and log in through your phone. Then when you can't get through, you get you got, got you go through this other site. You email them, and then you have to take a picture with this code that they send you to the email just registered to your account. Loads of loads of bullshit anyway, basically, to get it back. But it's essentially, it worked, and I'm back in my account now. So check me out, Axnozinga, all one word on Instagram. Link in the show notes for you guys that are checking. But I got some books I bought. I post them up on my IG, books that I'm going to read for the entire month. So I don't really have any other room. But I, mem I remember somebody mentioning on the Sam Harris podcast, uh, the book called Multiple Intelligences by Howard Gardner. And I think the basic premise of it is, you know, there's different kinds of intelligence, right? It's the same kind of thing where, you know, you see somebody on the, on the field, um, on the sports field or playing football, tennis, whatever it may be. And, you know, they, they're a genius on that on that playground, right? They're, they have a genius way to approach things, to solve problems, to win, whatever it may be. Then you take them outside of that environment and, you know, apply that genius in other areas. It doesn't necessarily chalk up the same way, right? They might not be, you know, they might not be that um, intelligent outside of their sports-specific um, skill set, whatever it may be, right? You, you hear all the time, footballers, you know, they have they give interviews and they're not the most articulate people in the world because they don't really need to, right? Their, their talent, their skill is in kicking that ball um, around the field. So I've got thinking about Kylie Jenner the same way. I keep saying Kylie like that because I keep mixing Kendall and Kylie. Um, but um, I was thinking about Kylie Jenner the same way because that whole hands may tell theme party was a bizarre thing to do. Not because it was, you know, socially unacceptable, not because, you know, whatever it may be, but it's just because when you watch the hands may tell, the last thing you think about is celebrating anything to do with the suffering that you're seeing on TV. You don't really associate good times with the hands may tell. You don't associate anything with it, especially after season one, right? Um, spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! You know she runs away. The lead, the lead actress, she's able to escape um, with the baby that she's had um, at Gilead, and then you know during the escape realizes that you know what she's got another daughter who's also taken from her. They'll split, and who's also still in Gilead. And for the safety of her, she would rather stay in Gilead, knowing that her daughter's safe, and send the other kid or the other daughter that she has back to her estranged husband who's now living in canada in refuge so she goes back again right so it's this in turn it's a it's a constant show and you're like oh shit i'm gonna go for another emotional roller coaster because season one was brutal to watch right it kept going from like you know just as you thought she was just about to kind of get her things in order and she's gonna you know lead the revolution and make sure everyone get leaves it kind of got went crashing back down again just when somebody you just when you thought she found an ally someone's gonna help her out and you know be um um another kind of tour in the resistance crashing back and they get betrayed just constant toing and throwing brilliant writing from the act from the writers um great directing and the, you know actresses and the actors playing in that show are amazing too really really bleak and cinematography just superb but the last thing you think about when you watch that show is like you know is oh yeah i'm gonna celebrate especially last episode right i'm, I'm on season two episode five 
if you guys are watching that, like, you know what I mean. After watching season two, episode five, and the end sequence, and seeing her face, and seeing how angry she is, the last thing I just immediately thought about Kendall Jenner. I mean, Kylie Jenner, like, what the fuck was she thinking? That party was insane. Imagine thinking, right, that you want to have a party. It's like, it's maybe not on the same level as the Chernobyl tourists, right? Because the Chernobyl tourist, I think there's something quite fun about it. You know, and if you're a kid or a young person, especially on social media, social media is essentially a clout chasing platform, right? Everyone wants to go viral. Everyone wants to have that um, thing where they wake up in the morning and they just, you know, their, their, their notifications are like on 99 plus, right? It's just like ringing off. People are following them. Everyone wants that moment where they suddenly blow up. That's what everyone's sort of waiting for on social media. In the same way, people are waiting to win the lottery and become millionaires. And, you know, somehow someone's going to stumble upon their talent. People just want to get you know, to blow up, to become viral on social. So you can get the Chernobyl thing in some respects because, you know, it's a real, it's a big hit TV show, highest rated um, HP show on IMDb. It's got all these ratings. It's, it's gone, you know, it started a conversation um, in, in society in general about how we treat these atrocities. It's got Russia to respond and they want to produce their own show. It's an amazing program, right? I get it. I get it. You want to touch yourself to it, get some clout, get some new followers, no problem. But hands may tail. The hands may tail. Imagine having a party themed. I get going on to Halloween, right? Dress up as someone from Hands May Tale. Get d- d- dressing up as you know the, the people from Gilead. Cool. There's something quite sinister and ironic about that. But celebrating it like a Hands May Tale themed party, like wow, that's some that's some like that's some like brick level level. That's some like I don't know. That's some stupid. That's a stupidity level that really knows no bounds. But again, it's amazing to see that she is so dumb in one as- aspect of the word, right? In you no, know, oh my God, imagine watching her handmade tell and forget. Oh my God, the outfits are so hot, right? That's the first thing that comes into your head. Not, oh my God, this is crazy. I wish something like this happens to us in society nowadays. I'm gonna, I don't know. You take a message from it. You get like an activism bump from it. I don't know. There's something, some other reaction apart from, wow, they've got great outfits. That's the first thing you think about. Like, how empty must your head be? That's sometimes I think to myself, like, as much as it must be amazing to be, you know, around that kind of environment, you know, it's always changing. You're meeting so interesting celebrities, all this sort of stuff, especially if you're that kind of way inclined. It must get really, really boring after a while, right? Speaking to people who are just dimmer than dim. It's just like, wow. But again, it's just, just amazing. You're a billionaire in one asset, right? You're a 20, what is she, under 25, right? She's billionaire two times over. She's got enough money, you know. She's got more money than God. Her family is looked after for generations and generations to come. All throughout, all through, all because of her hard work and her ability to somehow garner attention on social and then monetize that. Built an empire, you know, within less than less than five years of her cosmetic line. Um, just amazing person all around, right? In that respect. But then in one avenue, just dumb as bricks. It's like, wow. And I just got thinking, honestly, if you watch if you've watched Hands May Tell season two, episode five, you know what I mean. Like after watching that episode, I was like, How could you actually think a Hands May Tell party would make sense? Like, huh? What? It's like, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Oh God, bless her though, isn't it? Bless her. Who cares, isn't it? If you, if you that sometimes, sometimes you know, like when you have people tell, oh, I want fuck you money, so I can just you know say fuck you to all the people that kind of you know done me wrong over the years, and I don't have to listen to nobody. There is a, there is also a level of money where you just don't need to be smart, right? There's like fuck intelligence, fuck reading money. There has to be that kind of level, right? That's where the whole Kanye thing come in, right? I don't read, taking part. I don't read. I don't read. I just feel. It's like, mm, feeling's a bit dumb, isn't it? Though? If you're, if you're in, led by emotions, you're not going to be the most rational person in the world. And ration, less rational people don't make good decisions, right? As we've seen. But um, I wonder if there's a level of financial independence where you just don't, you just don't give a shit about being smart. You just live entirely for yourself. You're incredibly self-absorbed. Quote to my guy, Will Starr, in a book called Selfie. You're super self-absorbed. You don't care about anyone else apart from your immediate family and your friends. Everything revolves around that little circle, and that's it. Um, why? Why should I be aware of things going outside of my circle? Why should I, that's where maybe that's where nationalism comes from and populism, right? That kind of idea. The idea that these intellectuals have somehow led us astray all these years. So now I'm going to take back what's mine, and I'm going to shun um, anything informed, anything intelligent, anything well thought out, and go with my gut because my gut doesn't never do me wrong, right? Because people think that, isn't it? When they're hungry, they go and eat because their gut tells them, I'm hungry. So when they have a bad feeling about something or a job or a partner, 
they date them anyway because why not right life's too short why not get into a fucked up abusive relationship <laughs> i don't know i don't know man i'm just trying to think things through i'm confused oh i guess maybe the the answer or the the answer to all this suggestion the, the answer to everything i'm kind of throwing out is you know life's too short you can't be worrying about how smart or dumb kylie jenner is I can't, why do i keep saying kylie I how smart or dumb kylie or kendra are you just gotta keep concentrating on what you're doing and hope you you know through the you know the sweat of your brow and the rolling up of your sleeves you get what you need to get to because you just can't understand people people can you just about understand yourself right i'm flawed as they come in it i've got many many errors i need to correct so trying to understand or trying to psychoanalyze someone that's a member of the kardashian family is probably not the best thing to do and not the best use of my time um so let's move on to some topics internet articles i've seen on the web that i want to speak about number one number one 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 so talking about this book called selfie that i've been reading by will store i've been banging on about it the last couple of episodes so peace to give i but I've been on a bit of a reading tear, as you can tell, just back on Instagram, so you can tell where I've been spending my time. So I'm reading a book called Selfie by Will Store. Amazing book. It's the subtitle, How the West Became Self-Obsessed. If you're interested in that topic, I recommend you check it out. Well, there's a really heart-wrenching story towards the back of the book, right, where Will Store talks about this guy that he meets called Austin Hines, right, who um, is an investor in this startup um and he says something, you know, out of turn during an interview. And, you know, the council culture um, dumps the fire of League of Journalists out there, decide to take his word out of context, run a, you know, a smear campaign against him and essentially shame him um, out of, um, shame him out of existence, right? Which eventually leads to him committing suicide. It's a really gut reaching story, but also it goes to show... Um, the complete lack of accountability in social media nowadays right or in council culture in general i have a theory that council culture is kind of done i think nowadays the the prevalence of it has sort of waned a little bit the reactions aren't as rich aren't as um visceral as they used to be people are a little bit more um hesitant to kind of really pile on unless the pile on is necessary um, people are able to bounce back more often than not um there isn't the complete blanket ban and chucking out of things and deplatforming and taking off your name off the wall if that's not the same thing anymore now it's sort of like measured a little bit but i have a feeling that um if this would happen nowadays this story right this is an article from inc that kind of talks about it um i think this journalist would have been in more trouble now they'd happen now honestly because again there's this idea on the left especially with um liberals or with people you know not like liberals well with um people on the kind of fringes of, of the left wing of politics which i'm not really a big fan of i don't try and get involved in but just from observing what's going on in the you know in the screaming matches on twitter and stuff there is this idea on the left that um words are violent right um there is this idea that words can be triggering right they can lead to episodes of depression anxiety ptsd they can be abusive whatever it is right there's this really bizarre word that somehow words are violence which you know if you've been suggesting any kind of violence or you've grown up in a violent area you'll know that that suggestion is bizarre but if words are violent which let's agree with that notion is true then wouldn't it be also within reason to say that this journalist has some kind of culpability or responsibility for this guy eventually killing himself you'd think that right but no because this journalist in the follow-up article so you know in the book will start details the entire scenario that kind of led to this guy's suicide right he went to a press conference he was at a press the um austin hines was an investor on a startup he said something untoward on a on a stage during a or during a demonstration for the service or product whatever it is that they were doing a journalist heard it misinterpreted it or pub or purposely misinterpreted it spread the news or written an article about it on the internet it then caught wildfire the other kind of counterculture platforms then decided to take a hold of it as well like salon and all those kind of places in vox ran stories besmirched him smeared him until a point where he felt as if like he had no way out and he hanged himself right in the same building where his startup that he invested in was based so imagine people finding his body right as he's hanged himself so the follow article um from this journalist who wrote the first article and maybe the second follow-up to kind of really smirch him this is the headline that he uses imagine this guy's now dead right this is in 2000 and, um what's it 2017 i think or may 2018 um this article in the headline on ink says why we need to talk more about mental illness and tech and business like what 
imagine imagine the gumption the balls on somebody to title an article that eventually an article kind of you know off the back of somebody that they s- smeared in public has killed themselves committed suicide and the first thing you want to write is that shouldn't the title be i'm sorry full stop right again you, you can't i'm not going to put all the blame on the dude right i'm sure you probably feel shitty about it but to somehow completely remove yourself from the situation and say it was a episode of mental health illness um that kind of led to it and to kind of now decide you're now the spokesperson of mental health in tech and business come on dude jump over a hill mama mia right so this is by an article by jeff berkovici berkovici right and it says the following um i'll read it to you quickly and then we can kind of move on because it's a bit of a harrowing story so it says the following um last november at a tech conference in silicon valley i met an entrepreneur named austin hines he was there to talk about this biotech company um cambrium genomics right genomics and some products he was working on one of them a probiotic supplement called sweet peach that would change the smell of women's vaginas sound astonishingly sexist right which is really crazy why would it be sexist for a guy to make to invest into a company that's trying to change the scent of women's vaginas it, usually most times right again it sounds crass and whatever it may do but usually in tech usually in that kind of startup environment they're usually starting the good companies you know, the ones that are trying to really make the big bucks and quote unquote change the world they're usually starting their apps based off a need that already exists right they're trying to fulfill they're trying to um, solve the need right they're trying to help people out bridge the gap uber airbnb whatever amazon whatever it may be they're trying to service a need that exists that no one's actually found an answer for most of the time so if a guy is deciding to front this company he's not even the main dude but he's been in front of it speaking about it, the spokesperson it comes from this idea in women's circle that they want their vagina to smell a different way right so for instance this kind of logic it doesn't make sense because if a dude decided to start up the first company that made um that i don't know that uh service women for processes of i don't know vaginal rejuvenation right or whatever it may be and he decided you know he went to africa he saw these women that were had vaginas mutilated through torture and everything regard or he was just like a dude from the hills that wanted to expand his you know um cosmetic surgery um offerings and decided to then venture into vaginas would that be sexist what the fuck does that mean what so you can't invent something or provide a service for a gender or race or people that you're not a part of that doesn't make any sort of sense like what so what should we not use iphones because steve job wasn't black like all right cool immediately dickhead it immediately put me in the mind of horror stories i've heard about what it's like to be a woman in silicon valley again this is a dude a dude it's always dudes that do this it's always the, it's never the person that should be offended that's the one like flying the flag when it is the person i've got a little more sympathy and i can and i can kind of listen to it right so when carlos Mazza is having his beef with stephen crowder even though he's being annoying i can get his point right because it does seem like stephen crowder is purposely picking on him and just probing the bear, poking the bear. Now he's responded back. Also, Stephen Crowder is a spokesperson for free speech. I understand it can be annoying for Carlos Mazza. But it's from him, right? He's he's a, a queer dude who's kind of feeling like this guy is kind of poking in front of him because of his sexuality and because he's pillow is called It's no problem. But when it's a guy standing up for a women's... What? Like, cause, like what? Let the women come up and say the sex and say, oh my God, this is horrible. Why don't they... Cool. But that is not even a conversation here. Like, it's just a bizarre thing. Anyway, it continues. I was watching her presentation and following up with him on one to one. I wrote a breezy article poking fun at Heinz. Poking fun? No, you didn't. You ripped into pieces. And his idea, it went moderately viral, very viral, and caused some problems for Heinz. Problems, more than fucking problems, who it emerged was only a minor investor in Sweet Peach and had mischaracterized it significantly. In a follow up interview, he expressed regret, but also told me the controversy would be great for Sweet Pea, which is true. With Sweet Peach, like, controversy sells he's trying to justify like oh he knew what he was getting himself into no he didn't you f- fucking idiot that's why you raised 10 million dollars because shit happens um that conversation uh deepened my impression of heinz as someone who sought to be provocative and either didn't care or didn't realize how he came across again you didn't care about what how much weight your words had did you either in late april i had my next and last contact with heinz while reporting his magazine feature on biotech startups backed by peter Thiel, a group that included um cambrian 
um, Cambrian Genomics. I asked to interview him for the story, understandably reluctant to speak to me again. He agreed to answer a few questions by email. His replies were curt. On Thursday, I learned Steve, Steve Austin Hines committed suicide. A few weeks after our exchange email, our email exchange, I found out about his death from an article in Business Insider, which said he had a history of mental health illnesses. Okay, cool. He's already trying to cop, please. Bipolar disorder that was among the diagnoses he had been given by psychiatrists. Of course, coping, please. This guy is and there's perfectly functioning people out there with bipolar and mental health illnesses living what well, living life well and keeping their mental health issues um you know under wraps for the most part they might have episodes where they freak out but for the most part they're able to live with it to somehow suggest that that was the main reason why he killed himself is obscene considering what he writ right so just a completely a guy lacking any kind of moral compass in any way shape or form any kind of compassion or empathy it's fucking bizarre right um Bipolar disorder was, on, uh, was among the diagnosis he'd been given by a psychiatrist. According to a semi-anonymous memoir he published, Business Insider quoted a friend of Heinz, Mike Alfred, who said many articles, who said my articles and official coverage they attracted weighed heavily on Heinz's mind in his final moments. And he reported he felt like garbage upon learning that someone who, to whom he'd been professionally unkind had taken his life. I probably feel more garbage than most. Seven years ago, my younger sister... Oh, yeah. So, again... That's what I mean, right? So he's just copying, please. No way he's... I haven't researched the article. Did, did he say sorry? All, all, this, all the same, I'm sorry I didn't. Sorry I didn't what? Anyway, this guy's a piece of shit, um, um, Jeff Bukosic. And again, just goes to show the lack of understanding nowadays when it comes to the weight of your words on social. If we, if we, you know, jokingly tell each other that people exist only on social media and they're addicted to it, and there's books I'm reading like, you know, digital minimalism, digital minimalism by Cal Newport that argue that we should, you know, remove ourselves from our smartphones and detach ourselves from social media in order to live more fulfilling lives. If that's an actual thing, and he's got a whole book that kind of details the the practices and the projects you need to do in order to kind of break free from that digital handcuffs. Right, so we know it's some kind of addiction that's akin to drugs and alcohol. If that's the issue, if that's true, then why it should be no surprise that somebody that lives entirely on there, whose reputation is entirely framed by the things they do on social media, would think that there's no other way out for themselves if they feel that they've been backed into a corner other than taking their own life because somebody wrote a bad article about them. It should make complete sense. It shouldn't be that far fetched. It shouldn't be like, oh, there's no words that matter. Yeah, they do. You just said it, right? You just said these these people on social the left-wing people are like you know words matter and words can be violent okay cool if that's true when you write an article you know smearing somebody be i don't know cognitive that it might go left it could go left really quickly it might not hopefully it doesn't but it could be responsible for your words but said no you don't get nothing you get this guy tight again maybe it's not him titling it but it's like we need to talk about mental health no we don't need to talk about it you weren't interested in it before you read the article you didn't care it's just insane insane the level of fucking empathy that exists on the internet it's just bizarre to say the least like it's like huh especially for the people that are meant to be understanding of the various facets and be a little bit more nuanced and have all the information they you know journalists and um commentators and media figures they should be the ones that are a little bit more hesitant to kind of you jump out there and be knee jerk but if anything they're the ones that cause the knee jerk right their instant kind of panic and you know um outlandish comments are what kind of set the tone all around the world right it's like when reza aslan posted that picture of that covid cupboard no that kid that was wearing the maga hat and he was kind of standing in front of the native american dude the first thing he posted oh it, it, it doesn't this kid has the most punchable face like you're reza aslan how old are you man how old's that kid you're telling you're, you're posting a picture of some random dude wearing a hat smiling at a native american guy and saying he's got a punchable face like what and that just set the conversation for the whole thing right then it kind of transpired that whether the native american dude was saying was a complete lie which no one really followed up on it's like wow insane insane world you live in man but again r.i.p to austin hines like sad sad turn of events but again i hope now we see a change in this whole council culture thing and things start to move in a different direction because it's getting it's getting a bit boring isn't it really isn't it all this outrage like everyone's upset about something like god damn it man be upset about other things i should be upset about my glasses nearly breaking just there <laughs> nearly actually breaking um yeah yeah what do i know anyway let's move on so 
Talking about cancel culture, I think cancel culture is about to end, right? Have you seen the story regarding Bella Thorne and Whoopi Goldberg? Who would have thought you would say those two names in the same sentence, right? Bella Thorne, Whoopi Goldberg. Got into a weird little back and forth. Well, not really a back and forth. More so, you know, the View uh, panel commented on an issue Bella Thorne had. And Bella Thorne decided to do the best thing that most millennials love to do. And it's cry where they got their phone in their hand. That's a skill that I've never really been... I've never really understood how that works, right? The ability to hold a phone in your hand as a selfie and start crying on cue. It's really psychotic. It really is. It's like... That's a bit disturbing that you can just do that. Um, usually when you're crying, the last thing you want people to see is you, right? You're crying, right? You don't want anyone to see you. Yeah? You're on your own. You know, you're going through a rough period. You're feeling shit about yourself. The last thing you want to do is draw attention. You're not going to cry, you know. And there are times that you can just cry and burst into tears, you know, because you remembered something or you remember somebody that you lost or whatever it may be or you're going through a bad situation. But usually you're not trying to have people look at you whilst you're crying or checking your likes. It's like that. Remember that video? Of there's a little meme, a video of this girl crying on social. She's got like an iPad on her bed or something. She's sitting down. She's like crying. She's a little girl, like a toddler, like, uh -huh, uh -huh, crying. And then she kind of stops on cue, stops recording it on the phone and kind of like writing the caption that she's writing. It's like, whoa, freaky. Anyway, so this story goes like this. Bella Thorne, um, a uh, young social, I don't know, is she an actress social? I don't know. Well, I know her for being Lil Peep's ex-girlfriend. She's on the scene. She's around. You know what she looks like. Bella Thorne, whatever it may be. Just one of those hollywood um girls around town she um she's gets blackmailed by a, a random hacker group who threatens to leak her nude pictures pictures that she had inadvertently uploaded to her icloud right because you know everyone's got an icloud you want to threaten some person your phone you upload them to icloud sometimes you have a setting on your phone that all might up to them on there anyway so the hackers end up hacking her account got all her pictures and videos that she kind of had on her phone privately she sent to you know people choking up with but just in general for herself you know pictures of her naked whatever she may be doing kids can do what they want on their phones cool young girl she can do what she wants they're threatened to leak it bella phone decides you know what i'm gonna take the stand i'm gonna leak them myself so i'm not gonna be blackmailed cool good little thing she done in it right because i think this one else did that right one day some another girl did that too i forgot it was i think um radiohead recently did that too because they got um they got blackmailed by hackers that they were going to release their unreleased album blah 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 there are precedents that have been set this way she does it she released her own news on twitter and everyone freaks out right so the view uh, panel of people who are usually, you know, kind of, you know, mums, women in, you know, in the in their mature years, sit down and talk about this issue. And naturally, um, with most of the panel being mums, with the exception of maybe Whoopi, I'm not sure Whoopi's got a kid, but most of the panel are mums or are maternal figures in that response. They have a very maternal figure response. And I think Whoopi's reply was like, oh, you should never do that anyway. I'll, I'll play the video in the background and just mute it so I don't want to get kicked off here. But it's a video here from the Hollywood Reporter. So basically, Whoopi says something on the lines of like, you shouldn't have, you, sh you should know better than this, right? Bella Fawn isn't a child. She should know better than this. And this isn't something that you should really be doing in 2019. You know that if you up upload a post a picture on your phone it can potentially go to iCloud people can hack your account pretty reason thing to say right because you'd think if that was Bella Fawn's mum if you're someone's mum right and you found that your daughter had all their all their naked pictures strung out online because someone hacked their phone you would be disappointed and angry at these hackers but you know frustrated you want to beat somebody across the head cool but you'd also want to just like shake your child and be like what the fuck were you thinking why would you take pictures of yourself on your phone right and send them to randoms or whatever maybe right you'd be upset it's a general kind of mum thing to say but of course you know like if you are not if you don't take some responsibility for your own actions and you're a bit entitled what sort of reaction you're gonna have you're gonna blame everyone else but yourself so Bella Fawn got on Instagram and started crying, right? Or with the phone in her hand, crying that somehow Whoopi Goldberg had body shamed her, had caused trolls to come after her, um, had then she equated somehow that suicide victims, this is what suicide victims have to go through when people don't take their uh, plight seriously. Just some really heavy, heavily charged words and accusations against basically Whoopi Goldberg taking a general kind of mum stance. But I think it's interesting, this whole issue is that it's the end of cancer culture because I think if this would have happened a few years ago, Whoopi Goldberg would potentially have to got fired from her role at The View. Potentially. She would have had to walk away, step away. Apologies, this is a video in the background here of, of Bella Fawn crying. No, she's sobbing. You know what's weird about this? She obviously was crying beforehand. We just saw the clip. And then side got on the phone, typed shame on you on the front of her thing, right? Shame on you with a U, obviously, because, you know, she's a millennial. And then just like crying on cue on camera. It's so bizarre that people do this. It's absolutely bizarre. 
you know, you see the people like Trisha Paytas sitting on the, you know, she's probably a little bit mentally disturbed, but the whole sitting on the kitchen floor and just crying your heart out, that's like, just, I don't know, I, I don't get it, I, I personally, it just makes me feel so awkward watching that, someone go through that, but again, I think cancel culture is finally coming to an end and I'm happy about it, because obviously, in, in a few years ago, I think Whoopi Goldberg would have got fired from The View, if this would have happened, like, she would have definitely got fired, Suicide Prevention Squad would have come out, there would have been articles written about her. She would have to re- apologize to all the people in the world that got. But it just would have been a complete clusterfuck. And again, it really removes any personal responsibility from anyone. So essentially, you can people commended Bella Thorne for posting her own nudes, right? Then somebody else kind of opposing comments said, "Yeah, of course, what the hackers are doing is wrong, and it's abhorrent. They would come and hack your account and take any of your personal items and try and spread them out there or blackmail you in any sort of way. Disgusting, deplorable actions. They should be buried under a jail." cool but why are you taking pictures on your smartphone if you're of the level celebrity she is and if you're gonna do it why are you uploading them to the nightclub iphones are quite secure it's quite hard to hack into somebody's iphone but cloud-based storage systems they get hacked all the time it's like what are you doing but again no personal responsibility it's always somebody else's fault never your own fault again it's a really interesting way to view the world like i wish i had that in me i wish i could do that it's like, um, imagine you got fired from a job that you were clearly shit at, right? Um, you're just like, nah, it was his fault, man. The manager's a dickhead, man. No, you know that place, man. They don't know how to treat me. Anyway, they all know what they missed out on. It's like, no, no, no. Maybe it was your fault, right? Or so, uh, the, the girl of your supposed to be dreams breaks up with you because you've been treating her like shit. Well, you know what? Maybe if you treated her better, him or her, they would have stayed with you and you wouldn't have fucked it up, right? But nah, it's their fault. They don't understand me. They're not riding with me. They should be here come thick or thin. It's like, no, everyone has their breaking point. I guess it's Whoopi's breaking point. These young kids going around, you know, wanting all the privileges of looking the way you look, having access to people that you want to have access to. And the moment it backfires due to your own errors, it's suddenly you'll become a victim. The privilege has gone away now. You are speaking for all the girls out there who've been body shaking. Oh, come on, man. Now what? Is Bella Fawn going to be the spokesperson for girls with body dysmorphia? Or that I've been publicly shamed, or I've been the victim of um, what's that thing called? Um, where people kind of sex shame you? Like, it's no, it's not the same thing. This isn't the same thing. Like, honestly, I really. But again, I'm happy. Cancel culture is finishing and it's kind of wrapping up because I'm tired of it, man. Literally, I'm tired of it. I'm tired about speaking about it. I'm tired about seeing. It. I'm tired about reading about it. It's just like enough. There are some people who are gonna do things that you don't find cool, that you find abhorrent, that you find disgusting right but we live in a world where there are many people that are like that right our neighbors there might be people in our own families that we detest but we put up with them because that's what it is to be an adult that's what it is to live in the world that you live in i don't believe in this idea that you're going to change the world to kind of suit your preferences no you have to be in the world right and somehow navigate through all the shit that you don't like in order to kind of get to the place that you want to be right surround yourself with the people that you want surround yourself with you have to you're gonna have to go through a few shitty friends you have to go through a few crappy jobs and then eventually you'll get to that point or that place where you'll find some solitude some comfort in the people that are around you but you have to go through some bullshit you can't be just all daffodil and roses life is never gonna be that way it's too unpredictable there's too many crazies roaming around the street for it to be that way and what fun would it be anyway right everyone just being exactly like you and agreeing with anything you say boring <sighs> Mama mia, man. Honestly, imagine being Bella Fawn's friend and having her call you up sobbing on the phone about Whoopi Goldberg um, body shaming her. And then you're like, what? Tell me the story. What happened again? What? She she said that you shouldn't have uploaded your pics onto the iCloud because it's 2019 and she'd know better. When did the fucking fappening happen? Remember the fappening when all these celebrities got hacked? Why did they get hacked? Because all those pictures were on the fucking iCloud. All of them. Mostly, I think the majority of them on the iCloud. That's why they've all dried up now because most managers or agents worth their soul would have sat down with their clients with a tech guy and gone through all their digital devices and says okay cool if you want to send pictures of your JJ to your partner here's how to do it securely here's how not to do it securely and they've all kind of cleaned up their act that's why you don't see any kind of nude pictures of celebrities leaking anymore because everyone kind of realized during the fappening that hey this is an issue don't upload them to iCloud cool but still in 2019 this young girl who should probably know better because you know you've grown up with a digital device in your hand somehow gets duped into getting hacked and then decides to cry because somebody older thought that you know maybe took the position that you shouldn't be taking pictures of yourself nude anyway different points of view man Whoopi Goldberg's like what 60 50 something like what do you better to say 
Oh, you go, go, empower yourself, man. If I had a body like that, no, man. Like, don't put a picture of yourself up into iCloud. It's just pretty simple. Ay, ay, ay. Anyway, let's move on. Rant over. Um, Jesse Lingard, is he a Muppet? I don't know. I don't know. Is he a Muppet? It's hard to be a United fan nowadays, right? Isn't it? Isn't it hard to be a United fan? For any of my United fans out there who are suffering in silence, I am. Uh, I'm I'm with you guys, man. I'm fucking with you. Let me just let me just pause this and make sure all the sound is real. So, as you are aware, United have been going through a pretty difficult time as of late, right? We have our star players all wanting to leave: Lukaku, Pogba, David de Gea, and probably a host of others. We couldn't keep hold of a workhorse like Ander Herrera, even though he loved the club and he obviously wanted to, you know, whittle down his years at the club and he kissed the badge and he gave his 100 percent. you just you know the constant professional we couldn't keep ander herrera at the club we have a ball down in incapable of hiring a director of football to take control of the transfers because ed woodward has a bit of a power complex and wants to be in charge of all those kind of things we have a really strange dynamic we have man city who are absolutely blitzing the entire league and they have more money than god to spend on players that they want they have an instructor that can get them the players that they want they have managers the best in the world then you have flipping uh, Liverpool with one of the most inspirational managers that they've ever had in their history who's able to get the best out of pretty bang average players increase their um, value win a Champions League come within points of winning the Premier League it's just a whole complete clusterfuck right for United you know, two teams absolutely light, light, light speed you know ahead of everyone else and then us really scrambling to uh, pick up the pieces so it's a hard time to be a United fan so with that being happening with that happening or with that being the case Fans are being a little bit more critical, are being a little bit more um, mean to our players, especially our homegrown players, who seem to have been getting all the trappings of playing for Man United without having to do any of the work. In years gone by, players like David Beckham will get vilified in the press, even though he won countless amounts of honours, countless amounts of personal honours to the club and country. He get vilified in the press because he was going through a he was in a period of public relationship with one of the biggest stars in the world at the time, Victoria Beckham, who was part of the Spice Girls, and just you know he was a very a very attractive footballer, still is. Was probably the first kind of you know attractive brand endorsement kind of footballer. Looked good on camera. Um, was into fashion. Blah 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 blah. And those kind of lines were really kind of blurred, which inevitably led to his exit from United, and he moved to Real Madrid for big bucks and did you know, and then went on to kind of enhance his legacy. But he, David Beckham used to get stick, but he used to actually prove himself on the pitch. So I have then, I can have some sympathy with some United fans who are getting annoyed with Jesse Lingard's antics on social because he's done nearly nothing. Right, he's not won anything. Right, he's done nearly nothing. Um, he's had a really this come off a very terrible season last season, and I don't know. I've said on Twitter the other day. I just thought I don't have an issue because one video that came out where you're saying beans, beans, beans. I'm not sure if he's rep, rep, you know in relation to you know taking MDMA pills or something. I'm not sure sure if it's just beans in general. But another video kind of leaked or another video that he kind of uploaded onto his Snapchat, um, which people are taking offense to. Where him and um, him and some friends who are with Max Rashford are, you know, doing a little I don't know room check after their holidays and wrapping up because I'm assuming they're coming back to UK to kind of prepare for preseason. This is the video in question. So you know, again, maybe he's high, maybe he's whatever, but you know, he's going through what he's going through. People are getting annoyed by it, right? They're like, you know, what what are these kids doing? They haven't won anything, and they're you know banning around like that. Now, again, I don't have any issue with, my, with players that play for my team or play for the team that I support, you know, relaxing and enjoying themselves. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I think it's a good thing. It probably shows that they're actually teammates and friends are hanging out together. The commander's going to be good. I understand. I get it. I like it. But the only issue I have with it is it's just a lack of, it's just the optics, right? It's like a Paul Pogba coming out the other day during a press, a whole press marketing run in Japan, I think, or Korea, wherever he may be promoting his Adidas line. And then he, you know, prompted by some reporters, he says, oh, I don't want to be a United anymore. I want a new, new challenge. I've been there long enough. I might want a new challenge. It's like, cool. It's just all well and good if you want to leave. The team is shit anyway. You don't probably see any any future going forward. You know, you don't have any assurances from the man from management. They're going to sort it out. No problem. You can go. That's okay. No problem. The issue is, like, imagine what Solskjaer feels like. Seeing Paul Pogba saying public he wants to leave the club after... Solskjaer publicly came out and said Paul Pogba was my guy I want to build a team around him he's the main figure here giving him a pat on the back saying he's a vice captain you know really giving him saying to captain without even having an armband really blowing smoke up his ass and really trying to let him know that I rate you I want you to be here for a long time 
So for him to do that to Soul Shark personally is a piss take, right? Secondly, to do to for him to do that to our club is a piss take too, because why say that in public? We all know you want to leave. We, we got that impression for a while, right? You haven't really been putting in the performances. You've been inconsistent, even though your numbers have been on paper good. The performances on the pitch have been a bit lackluster. You're not hitting the heady heights that we thought you were going to hit. Maybe it's a consequence of the players you're playing around. But in general, he's kind of flat to deceive. No issue with that whatsoever, right? That's fine. But why don't you just say that? Why don't you just keep it behind closed doors? Go back to the club and report to the management and say that you want to leave. No problem whatsoever. It'll, the news would have gone out anyway. But to say it in public just makes you look such like a muppet. Same with Lingard thing, right? You had such a horrible season last season. We played terrible. We finished the season six, right? Six, right? No honours, no nothing. Just a complete shit show of a season. Um, it doesn't look like things are going to improve this season. We've signed one player in Swansea, uh, from Swansea, Daniel James, who might turn out to be an absolute, um, you know, worldie. But for the moment, he just looks like a kid that can run the league fast. Shoshua so said he went to get his season, his business done before preseason. That hasn't happened. And now we've got one of our best players, like, you know, one of our homegrown players posting videos of him in Dubai with his mates, like, chatting shit. Why doesn't someone there from management team just say, just lay low? The season ended shit. Just go on your holidays, no post on social media. Why don't they just do that? But no, that's what they want to do. It's like, it's infuriating, man. It's infuriating, the modern footballer. You know, it kind of reminds me of, you know, the LeBron James thing from Lakers and stuff. I think sports fans in the US are a bit different to the UK ones. They don't, I don't, don't think they care as much, which they should really. It's like if I saw OBJ flying around the world like attending fashion shows all the time, I'd be a bit pissed off if I was a Cleveland Bears fan, right? Like, well, just sit down and train, man. You've been out of the game for ages anyway. Like, get back to your best. You know I mean, this last thing I want my people to do. It's like LeBron James, like doing everything else but playing basketball, right? They didn't make it to the NBA Finals, right? And the Lakers. He was a big marquee signing. I'm pretty sure part of the reason he came to that franchise was to get into the NBA Finals. They didn't get into it. But I don't think in American fans has... Again, have the same kind of level of ritual to their players that we would in the UK. Like, imagine signing Hazard or Neymar. They completely shit the bed the season you signed them. And then they decide to, at during the season when they're shit in the bed, they decide to launch a media empire. Register a website, do all these photo shoots, have a talk show. You know, just in general, just post all these dumb videos on, you, on YouTube or on their social media. You'd be pissed if you were a football fan that happened. But I don't, again, I just... I just don't know what happens with these players nowadays, man. They're a weird bunch, man. They're completely different to the ones I grew up with. They're just strange. They're all about promoting their own brand. But again, sort of similar to like, you know, the football business. You would have thought that playing well on the pitch would just sort out all that other stuff in the background, right? If you're Jesse Lingard and you're actually playing well and you're performing and you're putting in great performances for United, all that other stuff you're doing on social media will look really good as soon as you start winning. When you're not winning, you're just like an absolute donut, like, don't you? No? I don't know, but hey, maybe he's a map, maybe he's not. I don't really care, man. I've, I've kind of lost any kind of feeling to United. I'm just numb to it. I really am because I know the issues aren't just team deep and selection deep. They're much bigger than that. If Oli can't succeed, doesn't mean... If Oli can't succeed, doesn't really say nothing because he's in a shitty organizational structure. I think um, we know that from now on. Like, you know, we've, we've gone through so many managers of all different types. Hasn't worked out. And the one that's, made consi- that's remained consistent lack of director of football or sporting director and Ed Woodward. Those are the things that remain consistent. Everything else has changed, but those guys are still hanged around. It's like, and now there's stories of fucking Axel Twen- Twenzavy, right? One of our young up and coming, you know, prospects at center back or in defense is now supposedly they're considering selling him, right? Because he wants to play first team football. But then Jones and Smalling get contract extensions. Like, <sighs> mama mia. Anyway, let's move on because Took about United just like pisses me off. <laughs> um, what else you want to talk about? I think that might, that might be it. Or should I talk about something else here? Let's see here. Oh, oh, it's a nice one. Interesting article. Um, it's an article from the New York Post talking about dad bods, which kind of got me interested in. Kind of got me thinking about conspiracy theories, right? Um. Weird one to make connection with, but I'll try. So, this post from the New York Post, it says, Dad bods are more attractive to women than rock hard abs, service says, right? Very interesting article. Because women are lying. Whoever took the survey, they're chatting out their ass. That's not true. We know it's not true, right? Um, anyone that's been in a club, in a venue, in a location 
where some where any dude right any straight dude who do, who's not you know um how do i say who's not concerned about their sexuality and doesn't get grossed out when they see another guy that's attractive any guy that's kind of can be honest with themselves who's been in the venue where there's other attractive girls in there and they're trying to hook up with somebody and they've seen another dude come in in alpha who's ripped to fuck super good looking dress well when you see the reactions on girls faces when those kind of guy, guys walk in when you see that when you see those that reaction in your head you got that memory banked and then you read this headline that boys are more attractive to women the rock hard app survey says you automatically know it's a lie because you've not you've seen different you've your eyes don't lie you've seen the girl drool lick her lips look at the dude 70 million times breaking her neck and you're like wow i've never seen that reaction from a girl in my entire life right and you see another dude get you're like oh there's levels to this shit right he has something there's something about his physical or genetic makeup that's made him more attractive to girls and you break down the elements like okay cool he's got cool hair he's got chiseled face good beard ripped to fuck dresses well i get it right and guess what i said in there rip to fuck right usually rip to fuck that's the reaction that you get from some guys rip some guys with some girls rip to fuck and you have to look at it in the gay world right in the gay world you go to Bergheim. what do you see there dudes that are ripped to fuck and how much attention do they do they get all the attention all of them all the attention yes some other guys are not in shape get some attention but the ones the pinnacles right the beyonce's of the gay world when you go to Bergheim are the guys that are ripped to fuck and and it, as it should be they work out two times a day they jack to fuck they don't eat shit and they go there veiny as fuck on ghb pumping their arms in the air of course they should get all the attention but somehow there's this collective thing that they're trying to convince men that we should be what body positive like bizarre maybe you can do that to women you can sell that shit to women women are, have a strange makeup i don't know again why that is it's like you know i've always, it's always fascinated me how there are girls out there who really follow you know those girls on instagram who have um, workout regimens or workout routines that they sell online like ebooks and where well, maybe or you know um, healthy eating plans and they you know of course they're genetically blessed or they look just look they're just stunning right and regular girls really follow them like you know they're fans of them they swear by them they buy their products it's like I, I never understood that it's like how can that girl tell you how can carly close tell you about how to lose weight when she's been you know that weight since she was fucking 12 right and i didn't understand there are some girls obviously out there it's like no i've got pictures of themselves when i was fat cool whatever but i'm talking about the ones that are like just stunners right model looking perfect kind of you know waist ratio to hips is amazing like whatever right big bosoms just look amazing they do all those weird kind of instagram bum workouts they just look stunning it's i just find it bizarre how girls follow it. and i think in the in the uk in the male you know environment community that wouldn't happen ever no guys looking at you know rich frowning and be like yeah i could achieve that you're not you know you're not you can get something close to it but you know you can't achieve that exact thing because there are some genetic makeups that are just different you might not be built the same you might not put on weight the same it's just different right it's just different but you just try and get to where you can get to but some girls actually think i remember saying this to some girl one day at a club we had this really weird argument about how differently the sexes view themselves it's something along the lines of like you know this girl is a mixture of girls like oh like i bet you deep i went to her like i bet you deep down you think like if you had enough money you could look as hot or hotter than rihanna right and she was like yeah of course like without even batting the knowledge you said yeah of course i can and it's like what so they generally think if they have money if they have a dermatologist a stylist um a personal trainer they could look as attractive as rihanna which is insane considering what being attractive is all about right it's genetics most of it right um you can look hot in clothes and well put together but attractiveness and just stunningness and having that <gasps> aura about you that's just genetics you can't help that it's just how you're you know mostly the responsibility of your parents and where you're born and how you've grown up and shit it's not something that you can manufacture there's no ebook you can get to become attractive like physically anyway right you can become an attractive person you can be know how to talk to people have the art of persuasion right know how to maneuver in social um, environments and shit but physically attractive you think a dermatologist is gonna sort that fuck come on no amount of fucking exfoliation is gonna take a two to a six impossible come on man tell precious that you think precious if she, you think if precious got a personal trainer she'll suddenly look like a gabrielle union are you are you serious like for real like what <laughs> saying like, anyway this got me thinking about conspiracies right like you know sometimes it feels like they put out this information hoping the masses kind of 
regurgitate it and sort of like take it as gospel and it kind of then defines the overall lexicon that's happening or it dictates what people talk about in society it's just a strange thing but i just don't think guys are going to buy this right it just doesn't make any sense so this article from the new york post it says the following men with slightly with slight belly and distinct lack of cheese great and again look at the people they're choosing right they're choosing chris pratt and leonardo dicaprio two people who are like it doesn't matter what they look like, right? There'd be a cure of women willing to sleep with them because of their position and their power. We know that is a thing. Read Sex at Dawn, you know where it's, there's some really conflicting things when they come, especially if you're a feminist, some things you're really going to find hard to swallow about what women are actually attracted to, right? In a mate, especially if it's a mate from the opposite sex. You know, power and position goes a long way. You don't have to see the amount of old crogy billionaires who are hooked up with, you know, a really young, slender, attractive 22-year-old. Why do you think that is? Come on, man. Yeah, she's hanging around waiting for him to drop dead so she can inherit his money. But most of the time, she's attracted to that power. They want to stand next to it. So imagine putting Chris Pratt and Leonardo DiCaprio as an example of dad bods uh, becoming a new thing. What the fuck? It doesn't matter what they look like. You know, if they had, they both had one arm, they'd be, they'd get more girls than I would get in my lifetime. Like, come on, man. Mamma mia. Anyway. Dad bods have been a thing since around 2016, according to Planet Fitness. The modern body type's popularity is on the up. It's not a modern body type. It's just guys that don't work out and eat. It's like a, it's like an athletic dude that tends to put on weight. You, you know, you might have some form on you, but you know, belly goes. It's not a body type you're actually looking to achieve. It's just mostly a dormant life, dormant lifestyle, right? You don't really walk. You don't really exercise. You don't really strain or stress your body in any kind of way. You eat when you want to there's no real structure of your diet that's a dad bod it's not an achievable thing like it's not like a thing you put on a fucking hill you put on a pedestal bloody hell um despite the abundance of chiseled men on tv and in magazines it appears more and more people are turning their uh backs on traditional herculean physiques no they're not uh there are many famous celebs including danny Dye and chris Pratt, who become poster boys for bulkier build body positive honestly i'm not i'm not reading this because it's making me angry count me out body positive for men I don't want. I don't want it. I don't want it. No dude wants to go to Top Man, Zara, and see a fat mannequin on there. No one wants it. Because they know they're fat. They're just going to buy their shit and go home with their dignity intact, right? They, look, they don't want to be, you know, marketed to go. You're just going to go to Giacomo. You're just going to go to Giacomo, hide, wear a hoodie, walk in there with a, with a fucking umbrella like your Michael Jackson, buy stuff and keep it moving. Again, I just don't know why. I just don't know why we just can't call a spade a spade. People are just blessed differently. Some people are tall and play basketball. Some people are fast and they run. Some people are freakily good at solving mathematical equations so they become professors or lecturers or mathematicians. Some people are really good at manipulating um, people's attention on social media and then monetizing it so they become a socialite or an influencer. Everyone's got a talent. It's just talent. It's okay. And sometimes you're blessed with different physical talents, physical attributes, right? Like, what can you do? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Some of it is your fault. Some of it isn't. Now, what you do after that is your fault. Would you lean into it and then become more fat? Or do you try and maintain it or try and lose it? But sometimes there's bills that you just can't work with. You just... There's nothing more you can do, right? If you have a hunchback, what else can you do? Is, is there a posture exercise you can do? Is there something that you have someone to lie down on the floor and beat your back with a hammer or some shit? Is there some sort of brace you can wear? I don't know. But if you got a hunchback and you can't help it, there's nothing else you can do. It's just the way you are, right? But what? Are you going to then um, uh, implore people that make uh, seats for cars to accommodate the way your, your back kind of hunches over? Are you going to ask them to not make fun of you like get offended if a comedian makes a fun of you and calling you notch back of notre dame in a comedy show and force them to apologize no you're not gonna do that you're gonna start dating out for people that hunch back like huh mama mia it's just like oh yeah yeah i oh, yeah yeah i i don't know i don't know but hey what do i know in it what the fuck do i know maybe i'm just an absolute idiot i'm just talking out my ass but you know what that's the beauty of having a podcast talking about podcasts it's now over that's been the Exit of Zinger Show, episode number 213. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your ears as per usual. Um, if you want to um, get in contact with me, please see the notes below or in the in the show descriptions. If you're watching via YouTube, leave me a little like. <laughs> Thumbs up. Um, leave me a comment if you've got a question. Um, sub and all that malarkey. Listen via podcast app. Leave me a five-star review. 
go a long way for people to find out about the show. And I've also got a donate button at the link below because I was on Patreon. I was running ads a bit on on this app as well. But it was getting annoyed. I was listening back to the show and this weird app would come in. Hey, have you ever wondered about home insurance? Like, it's so super annoying, right? So let's count that off. Ads, I'm not a fan of. I always skip ads in my in in my day to day life. I have an ad blocker on Chrome. I don't give a fuck about ads. You can go jump off a hill, but. There is options for you to support the show if you like what I talk about and you think I'm funny and shit or you just like my topics. Then why not donate a couple of quid, right, with the uh, PayPal link that's in the show notes in the description. I'm not going to lie to you. Some of the funds might be used to get a camera or to use a better microphone or you just might go to beer. And if I drink beer, then I'll be more funny. And if I'm more funny, you'll watch the show. Let's just call a spade a spade. So if you want to support my drinking habit or you want to support my ability to buy a new camera, especially this shitty um, camera that I got here or a new laptop or to eventually get a new studio for myself, then why not donate with the link below on PayPal there. Have a click, donate what you can and then we'll go from there, innit? We'll go from there. But apart from that, again, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be back again tomorrow for an episode of the show. But until then, my friends, wherever you may be, see you very soon. Peace, take care. Bye.